Alrighty, now we're going to look at some of these things on pelvis and lower extremity models. Here we have a leg. This is the big red leg, the so and so one. And we're basically going to start right here with our common iliac artery. Now these two muscles right here you will have to know as well. This is the psoas major muscle. This is the iliacus muscle. These two muscles are going to pass through the inguinal ligament, which is right here, and come together and form this muscle here, which is iliopsoas, a combination of iliacus and psoas major, iliopsoas. <coughs> so this right here is actually the common iliac. So your abdominal aorta would be running like this. So we've just cut that off right at the branch. And if we turn this a little, you can see the inside the pelvis where you branch into internal iliac and external iliac artery. This internal iliac is going to go deep into the pelvis here and we can see a few branches coming off of that. One of those is this branch right here which is called obturator artery. It's also running with the obturator nerve which is in yellow. This is the obturator foramen. You guys learned about that in 141. A couple other branches we can see off of the internal iliac which will be especially important when we do the back of the leg and reproduction you have one, two, three branches here. This is superior gluteal artery, inferior gluteal artery, and this one right here is pudendal artery. Superior gluteal artery, inferior gluteal artery, internal pudendal artery, off of the superior or off of the internal iliac artery, sorry. These nerves right here are all part of the sacral plexus. Obturators coming from the lumbar plexus, so this is obturator nerve, and you can see sciatic kind of going through the greater sciatic notch right there. If we follow this external iliac artery down into the thigh, we can see that it's going to pass under the inguinal ligament here and now it's going to be called femoral artery. You can also see femoral vein running with it. This nerve right here is your femoral nerve coming from the lumbar plexus and it's going to come out underneath of the psoas major muscle. So all three of these structures will pass through that inguinal ligament together and you can see those in the femoral triangle here. Okay, remember that femoral triangle that you guys learned about? There's your three things, femoral vein, femoral artery, femoral nerve, iliopsoas muscle. Now these two arteries are going to continue to be named femoral as we follow them down through the medial aspect of the thigh. Okay, here's that adductor longus muscle that you learned about. Here's the rectus femoris vastus medialis, and then behind this one, remember, is your adductor magnus. And you can see right here that there's a little canal that's formed in that adductor magnus muscle by these fibers right here. This is your adductor hiatus. Now this hiatus is where femoral artery is going to pass through to get around to the back side of the leg. So femoral artery and vein all the way down, adductor hiatus. Here's your femoral nerve here, and notice that it gives off this little skinny branch that's going to follow that femoral artery and vein. This is called the saphenous nerve. This nerve is not the femoral nerve. This is the saphenous nerve. It's skinny, and it's a branch from the femoral nerve, which is still up here in the femoral triangle. Coming off of femoral artery on this model, we can also see some of the branches. This right here is going to be your lateral circumflex femoral with the ascending branch and descending branch. And this right here is your deep femoral artery. So femoral artery, vein, and nerve, saphenous nerve, femoral artery, femoral vein, lateral circumflex femoral artery, ascending branch descending branch, deep femoral artery. 
Now we can turn this leg over. And we can look at the posterior aspect. And we can see some of those same arteries we saw from the front. We'll do the muscles first to give you a reference point because you do have to know these muscles as well. This is your gluteus medius muscle here. Your gluteus maximus was on top of all this and it's been cut. You can see the edge. This is your gluteus minimus. This muscle right here is the piriformis. Notice piriformis lies right on top of the sciatic nerve. These two things should be extremely evident on all the models and the cadaver and the prosection and you should never miss them. They're always going to be seen in this fashion. Piriformis, this nice triangular muscle with a nice skinny tendon on top of the sciatic nerve which is gigantic. Cannot confuse these two with anything else. Piriformis is a nice landmark not only for sciatic nerve but for finding your other small muscles and for two blood vessels and nerves that come out on top and below. Above the piriformis you have this artery which is superior gluteal. We saw that on this side right here. Okay, So now we're following it back to the back where it comes out. So this is going to go up and feed some of your gluteal muscles. Below piriformis you have actually two vessels that come out. Inferior gluteal, which was here on the front, and your internal pudendal. Internal pudendal will come out and curve around back underneath this ligament here to feed the pudendum, which is the area between the thighs. Inferior gluteal will kind of come out and go up towards the muscles here that would be sitting on top of it. This one that's on here appears to be internal pudendal artery because it's going back underneath this tendon or this ligament. Now underneath the sciatic nerve you have three little pie shaped muscles. One, two, three. So here we have piriformis, nice big one, and then we have three little ones. You have one in the middle which is called obturator internus and they all kind of go to a point here. These are all lateral rotating muscles for the thigh sort of like uh, the shoulder cuff muscles. These are the ones for the thigh that allows you to rotate your thigh outward. So these are called lateral rotators. This one is obturator internus in the middle and then you have one on either side of that and these are your gemellus muscles. One is superior, one is inferior to the obturator internus. So this would be superior gemellus, inferior gemellus with obturator internus in between. So piriformis, superior gemellus, obturator internus, inferior gemellus, and then you have a square shaped muscle here. Okay, it looks like a square. It's right under inferior gemellus. And this is called your quadratus femoris. Quadratus because it's shaped like a square or a quadrilateral. Okay, so piriformis, sciatic nerve, superior gemellus, obturator internus, inferior gemellus, quadratus femoris, superior gluteal artery, internal pudendal artery. This one right here is your medial circumflex femoral poking out from the front. And if we take off some of our thigh muscles here, we can see our sciatic nerve again continuing down the back and then we have some small branches coming off and feeding this large adductor magnus muscle. These are your perforating branches from deep femoral. If we go down behind the knee, the popliteal fossa, which is right here, we can see sciatic splitting into two large yellow structures, two large nerves, and now we can see the reemergence of what was our femoral artery and vein, which are now called popliteal artery and vein. They're in the popliteal fossa take off these lower leg muscles as well. So sciatic nerve splits into two large branches. One continues down the tibia and one goes laterally towards the fibula which is here. So this is tibial nerve and common fibular or common peroneal nerve. Common tells you what? It is going to branch and we'll look at the branches in a second. 
So sciatic splits into common peroneal nerve and tibial nerve. Femoral turns into popliteal artery and vein as it exits that adductor hiatus. Tibial nerve runs with popliteal artery and vein in the popliteal fossa. Now popliteal artery and vein are going to give off those genicular arteries for the knee. One, two, three, four. Superior lateral genicular, superior medial genicular. Inferior lateral genicular, inferior medial genicular. If we turn it around to the front, you can see them coming out on the front aspect of the knee. Superior medial, superior lateral, inferior medial, inferior lateral, genicular artery. Then popliteal is going to come down into the lower leg and start giving off branches. Remember it splits. One is going to be posterior tibial, which is going to continue with tibial nerve down the back of the leg. It's also going to give off an anterior tibial here to the front. And then posterior tibial will give off the peroneal artery, which will also go towards the front, but the peroneal will feed the lateral aspect of the leg, and the anterior tibial will feed the anterior medial aspect of the leg. Keeping to the back for now, we'll follow the posterior tibial artery and tibial nerve all the way down to the ankle here. And then they will go down behind that medial malleolus. To see where your common peroneal nerve goes, we have to turn the leg over back towards the front. So we'll turn this over. And here, we can see where one of the branches from common peroneal nerve pokes out here. This is called your superficial peroneal nerve and that will continue down into the foot giving off metatarsal and digital branches to follow the metatarsal, dorsal metatarsal and dorsal digital branches of the artery. And if we take this muscle off, underneath we can see the other branch from common peroneal nerve, which is deep peroneal nerve. So common peroneal here from the back. Oops, you can't see that. Right here. Coming off of sciatic. Curves around to the front. Giving off superficial peroneal, which will continue on top of the muscles and go down to the ankle. And deep peroneal. Now deep peroneal is running with this artery right here, which is your anterior tibial artery. Deep peroneal, anterior tibial artery running together down the anterior aspect of the tibia. Now you can see a little piece of your fibular artery here, but on this model you can't really see the rest of it except for this little branch here in the back. And remember, your anterior tibial is going to cross over the malleolus, becoming dorsalis pedis and then give off an arcuate with your metatarsal and dorsal digital arteries on the top of the foot. And you can't see those real well on this model. We'll see those better on the foot.